It's time to round out the AFC portion of my 2013 NFL Draft recaps by taking a look at the AFC West. The Denver Broncos were clearly the class of the AFC West in 2012 beyond question. And, you know, it was just amazing how much everybody else in that division just paled in comparison to them in 2012. In fact, they surprised me a little bit just how good the Broncos were during the regular season at least and just how bad the rest of the division was. Now with the Denver Broncos, with Peyton Manning as their quarterback and a lot of other veterans on the team, such as Champ Bailey, the bottom line is, is this is a team that has a very narrow window of opportunity, a very narrow window to contend and win a world championship, probably two seasons. So it's very easy for a team like that to ignore the draft and to go for veterans and really try to throw everything they have at it and try to just win now. And a lot of times, in my opinion, that's a mistake. Before the draft, you were hearing a lot of things and seeing a lot of things talking about that the Broncos were going to, in some particular order in the first three rounds, address defensive line, running back, and corner. That was going to be, in some configuration, what they were going to focus on in the first three rounds of the draft. I thought it was very wise to see the Broncos not sit there and trade away high picks for veterans because... You do, in my opinion, need a balance on your team of veterans and some youth and talent as well. You don't want to have all young players necessarily because you need some veterans for leadership. And you don't necessarily want to have all veterans because you have an all-veteran team. They can be old, they can play a bit slow, and you need some youth and athleticism and explosiveness. The Broncos in this draft, they didn't overwhelm me, but they did potentially find some contributors and potentially some starters in 2013. The pick of Sylvester Williams at number 28 was a solid value pick, somebody that's going to come in and immediately contribute on their defensive line. I was just a tad bit surprised they passed on a defensive end like Tank Carradine. Maybe if Bjorn Werner from Florida State would have been there at 28, the Broncos may have considered him. But Williams was a good value pick for where they were picking, and he filled a position of need. Some people, I think, were a little bit surprised that they chose Monte Ball, the running back from Wisconsin, in the second round. Ultimately, the team is built around Peyton Manning in the short term, and one way to protect Peyton Manning and keep him healthy is to give him the best running game you possibly have. And with guys like Noshan Moreno and Willis McGahee, uh, you can't really count on either one of them to be the bell cow running back. So why not draft Monte Ball in the second round? You know, the only pick I really questioned out of the top three, honestly, was their choice of Kayvon Webster from um, the cornerback, excuse me. I just wasn't sure that he was necessarily the best player on the board at that particular time. I understood he addressed a position of need, but maybe there were better players that you could have taken at that point in time, especially better secondary players. All in all, this draft to me was just a, a C. Nothing terrible, nothing great, but the Broncos potentially have some contributors out of this draft in 2013 and beyond, which is something that a lot of times uh, veteran teams and teams that are trying to win now, they don't always get from their drafts. So not the worst, the worst thing that could happen for the Broncos organization by any means. I bet you Williams and possibly even Ball will be starting by midseason for sure. The Kansas City Chiefs, I think, kind of had the... <laughs> the misfortune of being very bad in the wrong year. They decided to have the worst record in the NFL and end up getting the number one overall pick in a year where there was no clear-cut number one talent, in the year where there was no clear-cut, absolute slam-dunk, can't-miss franchise quarterback, in a year where there wasn't any one pick that you sat there and said, yeah, you know for sure that that guy is going to be a Hall of Fame talent when you see him. So the Kansas City Chiefs, by and large, were kind of stuck. Nobody was going to really want to trade up to number one overall. And, you know, they didn't have a quarterback. They could really, honestly, after thinking about it, they really didn't have a quarterback that they could take number one overall. It just wouldn't make sense. Um, so they were stuck. At least I will give the Kansas City Chiefs credit for this. They took the right left tackle, in my opinion. I think Eric Fisher has more upside. I think he's a superior athlete at the position. I think at times Jokel's film is a little overrated because of Manziel's ability to scramble at Texas A&M. I think if you watch a little closer, Jokel's good. He's not going to be a bust. He reminds me some of Matt Khalil um, as a prospect. But 
I just felt that Eric Fisher was a better prospect. So I do feel that the Kansas City Chiefs ultimately made the right decision in terms of if that was a position they were going to address, then they took the right player. Even though maybe the best thing to do wasn't take an offensive tackle number one overall. And you look at the rest of their draft. They gave up a second round pick for Alex Smith. Now that was dumb. Especially when you look at the fact that Geno Smith was still on the board in round two. They took zero quarterbacks in this entire draft. And for a team like the Chiefs, you, you traded for Alex Smith. You gave up way too damn much for him. Then you signed Chase Daniel. So you're going to tell me your top two quarterbacks are going to be Alex Smith and Chase Daniel. And you thought those two guys were so superior that you decided at no point in time were you going to draft into quarterback in this entire draft. You weren't going to take Geno Smith in round number two. You weren't going to sit there maybe in round four, round three and take Mike Glennon. Or in round four, take a guy like a Barkley or a Nassib or what the fuck have you. Maybe you didn't have to give up that second round pick for Alex Smith. I'm just saying. So in some ways, you know, I was not a fan of this Kansas City Chiefs draft before the draft ever even happened because of the giving up of the picks for Alex Smith. When you look at some of the other players, they gambled in the third round taking guys like Kelsey and Niall Davis. These are guys... They have big upside, but they also have red flags, different types of red flags, mind you. I really like their pick of Nico Johnson as an inside linebacker from Alabama in the fourth round. I think he could potentially be a year one starter for them. It wasn't a horrible class. I mean, Fisher's going to be a really good offensive tackle. Kelsey has the potential to be a starting tight end for them at some point. Niall Davis could be a great compliment to Jamal Tar Charles. Excuse me. Nico Johnson could end up being a starting inside linebacker in their 3-4. It was a solid draft. I still think they will ultimately pay the price for not addressing the quarterback position at all and for giving up a second-round pick for Alex Smith because the Chiefs will be improved in 2013, no question, but they're going to fool themselves into thinking that they're much better than they really are and they won't really be title contenders, so what the fuck's the point? You don't play to get to the wild card. You play to win championships. But as far as this draft, I'll give the Chiefs something like a C+. Plus. Even though the Kansas City Chiefs ended up with the number one overall pick, I said before when talking about the AFC South draft that I thought the Jacksonville Jaguars were the worst team in the NFL in 2012. Well, you could almost as easily argue that perhaps the second worst team in terms of a roster standpoint, in terms of the way they played, uh, the second worst team in 2012, that was the Oakland Raiders. They were bad. And the bottom line is that's an organization that needs direction, that needs a vision, that needs a blueprint of how they're going to do things, and they need to be totally rebuilt from the ground up. And GM Reggie McKenzie, I think, understands that. The first thing he did, he didn't fire his head coach. you got to get some type of stability at that position at some point in time, something Al Davis was terrible about in recent years. And McKenzie understands, you know, he has to make up for the bad, the bad, dumb dick trade for Carson Palmer. That was so fucking stupid. And that's what dumb organizations do. And for this past decade, the Raiders have been one of the dumbest organizations in professional sports, period. So now Reggie McKenzie, the general manager in this 2013 NFL draft, had to start the process of rebuilding the team and starting to fix some of the organization's previous mistakes over the past decade. Now being able to go from pick number three, move down nine spots, and pick up an extra second-round pick, the second-round pick that you didn't have because of that dumb Dick Carson Palmer deal, was masterfully played by Reggie McKenzie. Was DJ Hayden really the 12th best player on the board, though? He definitely filled a position of need. He was probably a late first-round talent. Was he worth the 12th overall pick, though? Eh. Would you have been better off maybe taking a guy like Sheldon Richardson at number 12? Maybe. Would you have been better off maybe taking Vaccaro at number 12? Maybe. But it's a heartwarming story that really pulls at your heartstrings with DJ Hayden. See what I did there? See what I did there? Uh, but I did like some of some of the other things that McKenzie did in this draft, getting men like Watson in round two. You know, him and Veld here at tackle could be a very nice tandem for several years to come. Seal Moore, I love him in the third round. Yeah, you need to bring in some competition for the quarterback position. Get one of these young quarterbacks. Get Tyler Wilson in the fourth round. It's pretty good value. I happen to be a fan of Michael Rivera. They have a, a talent void at tight end, so maybe he could be a contributor at some point in time. I thought this was an, a nice, solid draft for Reggie McKenzie. It didn't knock it out of the park. I'm still not convinced that Hayden was the right guy to take at 12, um, but only time will tell there. And if he ends up being a Pro Bowl caliber player, nobody's going to give a fuck that he was taken 12th overall when people viewed him as a late first to early second round pick. Uh, with that being said, 
I will give McKenzie credit. I think he he's off to a good start of trying to rebuild. They've got a lot of work to go though. I'll give him a nice C plus for this year's draft. To me, the clear winners out of the AFC West in this 2013 NFL draft were the San Diego Chargers. Now, for the past several years, A.J. Smith did everything he could to run this organization into the fucking ground. And by God, if that was the goal he set out to do, he sure as hell succeeded. Oh, I've got good players. I'm not going to fucking pay them. You'll go off in free agency. Am I going to really replace them in the draft or in free agency? No! You know, we'll just throw down some magic lightning bolt pixie dust and new players will appear that'll be even better and cheaper. It didn't happen, you dipshit. A.J. Smith should have been fired like four years ago. Fucker was awful. You've got a new day there. You've got McCoy as the coach. You've got Telesco as a general manager. And, you know, I find it ironic with the Chargers. For me, they're an organization that's kind of in conflict. And here's what I mean. Is they're a team that desperately needs to rebuild both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. But they have a quarterback in Phillip Rivers that you don't really have the luxury to rebuild around. He's already, what, 32 years old? He's been in the league almost a decade now. You really don't have time to rebuild around a franchise quarterback that's 32 or older. So it's a very conflicted organization. But I do think that Telesco, in his first draft with the Chargers, did a phenomenal job, especially in the first three rounds. To me, when you can get three players in the first three rounds, that all, in on my board, carried first-round grades. You've done a hell of a job. You haven't got outsmarted yourself. You played the draft board game, and you did things right. Now, taking Fluker at number 11, I understand, shocked some people. It really didn't shock me. I figured Fluker would either go 7 to the Cardinals or 11 to the Chargers. If you saw some of my mock drafts, you knew that's what I was saying there the last month before the draft or so. Uh, he does address a need. The bottom line is the Chargers offensive line with Boo Boo and any offensive lineman they could get is an upgrade. And Fluker could play right tackle. If it doesn't work out there, he could play right or left guard and be a very good player there. So he makes a lot of sense. At first, I wasn't on board with the Monte Teo um, drafting, but I realized they only had to move up a few picks to get him. They only had to give up a fourth rounder to move up. And he is a guy that could be the captain of their defense for the next eight to ten years. So and at that point in time, a player with a late first round grade being there in round two, it made sense to move up and get him. And then getting Keenan Allen in round three, the wide receiver from California. I mean, he had a little knee problem, sure. He liked to smoke a little weed, but fuck. I would think you'd want to take him at some point in time in the first round. And the fact that the Chargers were able to get him in the middle of round three was stupendous. This was a very well-played draft by Telesco in that Chargers front office. I gave him a solid B. I don't know about some of the later round picks, but the bottom line, they've got three future starters and three year one starters, in my opinion, in Fluker, Tail, and Allen. This was a very good draft. If you're a Chargers fan, you have to be encouraged by the beginning of the Tom Telesco era. Um, that's kind of the way I see the AFC West. Next video, I will move on to the NFC side of things and talk about the good old NFC East.